For $500, I would buy this iPhone. So can you guess what this iPhone is? If you guess the iPhone 12, you'd be correct. Now, the iPhone 12 right now retails at Apple stores for $599. However, there's a very strong likelihood this 5G iPhone is going to $499 after the 14 in just a few weeks here. Now, why is that a deal? Let's discuss that in this video. Off to the body. Now, on the body, you do get yourself this glass back, which you're going to get on the iPhone 14 as well. So for 50% less, you should be able to get an iPhone 12 with a glass back. Now, yes, they did diagonal off the cameras, as you can see with the iPhone 13 right here. They're a little bit larger. Lenses make it a little bit bigger again. We'll see, they like to do that pretty much every year. But there's nothing really wrong with these lenses. They really do a good job in performance. Now, you'll see we do have the aluminum rails on the iPhone 12, which is not likely gonna change on the 14. This is a material they'll likely stick with. And this really ushered in the industrial squared edges here. It also comes in multiple colorways, this red one included. So you have multiple color options. So overall, the body, one of the things I really enjoyed about it, and I actually had a brief stint with the iPhone 12 this year where I kind of used it, you know, for several weeks because it was just so much lighter than my 13 Pro Max. I just love the size of this phone. It's got that 6.1 inch size, but it's even lighter than the iPhone 13. Now the trade-off is worse battery life. However, it's a very compact feel, not quite mini compact, but that's ultra compact. This has still got a pretty compact feel, which is very comfortable to use. So body build design, I would say it's 90% of what the iPhone 14 is even gonna be. So why wouldn't you wanna save that extra cash? on an iPhone 12. So the next reason I'd buy this is the display panel. You're getting that 6.1 inch OLED XDR panel. Yes, it's 60 Hertz, but Apple 60 Hertz is pretty smooth. The colors are gonna look great even on, even today. So the iPhone 12's display has actually held up very well. Of course, that notch is a little bit wider. Some people like that one more because it's a little bit deeper on the newer iPhone, but the panel is still fantastic, and really, they've had OLED panels since the iPhone 10. This one was just a little bit better, a little bit uh, thinner bezels than before, so just overall a very strong offering here. The brightness does give you 625 nits, but nobody really complains about that. You can see it's incredibly bright still. Not 800 nits, not 1,000 nits, but still bright enough. So the panel, again, with these iOS 16 improvements, the animations are gonna be even smoother than before. You can see even on iOS 16, it performs just fine here. I just think it's a good panel still, and like, I really don't even think much about the newer upgrades. They've literally had essentially the same technology on the screen for several years now. So you could just literally save yourself three, $400 after the event and get yourself an iPhone 12 in any color you like, have the latest 5G, still have an iPhone really up to date, and still have an OLED display and not feel like you have some old, you know, LCD panel. So really strong here. All right, so when it comes to software, you're still gonna get updates for years to come. This is only two years old, so iPhone 13 actually gives you one more, but iPhone 12 will give you like at least three or four more years of updates. So this phone is actually not aged much at all in terms of the software area. Some Android phones won't even match that. Even though this phone is two years old, you'll still get more software updates than some current brand new phones. So why even spend the money on a newer Android phone that's only gonna give you two years of updates when you can get an iPhone 12 with iOS support for the next three to four years. That's incredible. You can see all the new wallpapers that are available for this. I just gotta say, man, it's just a solid offering at that price point because what else is out there for that price? Well, you have the Pixel 6a, which is around there, but if you wanna try out iOS and you're just not into Android right now, this'll be a really good option for you to consider picking up. And features wise, it's not gonna be that much different either. You're still gonna get the same essential features you get from iOS 16 on any other iPhone. You'll get widgets, you'll get the same animations. It's gonna be the same experience. That's what's great about the Apple iPhone is that it's consistent across the board no matter the device you're using as long as it is up to date. Performance wise though, you are looking at an Apple A14 Bionic chipset. And I gotta tell you, just to be real with you, I have not even been able to make this thing lag up at all. Like no matter what I'm doing, I could play games all day. It doesn't matter. 
This phone with the A14 Bionic is still a boss. The A15 was just even better. It was just a slightly improved A14. This does have four gigabytes of RAM, but that doesn't seem to matter on your day-to-day -day phone. I never catch any lag on the iPhone 12. I will say one area of performance, it's not really performance, it's actually thermals, but this phone can warm up quite a bit. If you're using a lot of case, you're gonna feel it if you're using this thing heavy. So I will say heat can be an issue. It does tend to seem to overheat if you're doing way too much on it. But other than that, it's incredibly smooth and day-to-day tasks, so you'll never even warm up. So only when you're really pushing it, you'll feel the heat. Other than that, performance is strong on this phone. Camera-wise, they did make some nice updates to the iPhone 13, so it's not quite the deal the iPhone 13 will be, but that's still gonna be around $699. However, what it does give you guys is a camera that's very competent. It does have the ultra wide, just like what you're gonna find on the iPhone 13. You can still do 4K at 60 video on both the front and the rear, and Apple really hasn't upgraded the front-facing camera too much in a while on the iPhone series. So what that means is that the iPhone 13 essentially will give you similar performance on that front-facing camera to the iPhone 12, which means the 12 is still offering quite the value. And also they do bring some of the newer features. You can do the aspect ratios and all that stuff here. You can't even do some HDR video provided it's in 4K at 30. You can do some really bright video on here. You can do portrait modes, panoramics, the overall quality is still superb on the iPhone 12. Like if I was using this now, posting videos on YouTube, posting Instagram posts, you guys would watch it and not even understand that I'm using an iPhone. You would still think I'm using a camera or whatever. That's how good the iPhone 12's camera still is. So don't be fooled by those smaller lenses. I, I know those bigger lenses always make people think they're just so, so much better, but honestly, it's just the covering. The iPhone 12 camera, still very good. It'll give you the business. Battery wise, when it comes to the iPhone 12, I know some people are like, come on, Nick, bro. This is like the second or third video. I seen you didn't charge your iPhone. Bro, cut me some slack. It's Sunday fun day. Let me, let me live my life a little. I'll charge you when I get to it. Listen, it actually makes sense though that we left it a little bit low for this video because the iPhone 12 is not my favorite in battery life. However, I will state one thing about this battery, and that is as long as your capacity is pretty high, I find the iPhone 12 to be that type of phone that if you're just a regular user, it'll get you through the day. Now, it's not that type of phone that I'm gonna use heavily and be having battery all day long. It does get down there. I mean, it's had me a little bit concerned around 6, 7 p.m. sometimes. I was down in the 30s, but I was still, I was still going. It's just I was seeing those red, I was seeing that red quite a bit more than I see on the 13 or even something like the iPhone 11, which both have better battery life. The 5G really hurt this one along with the fact that it wasn't a super large battery. It's just average. I wouldn't say it's horrible, but it's not great. Even now on iOS 16, it got a little worse with this beta series. We'll see how it does on the official iOS 16, but it's just an average battery life but it's not enough to sway me away from recommending this phone. A couple other things I wanna mention before we wrap things up. I almost use most of my storage, so I do a lot of camera stuff. So if you find yourself doing a lot of camera stuff, downloading quite a few games, try to spring for the 128 gig. Also, 5G was a very important thing for this phone, and it really, it's not just a 5G, it's the fact that this iPhone had Qualcomm modems again, which meant that the signal strength was really strong and the mobile connectivity was just, it was a superb. And that's some of the best things I really loved about the 12, just great signal strength, great 5G, overall a good connectivity phone. But other than that, I really only have one con with this phone and it's just the heat of the back of the device. Other than that, it really was a stellar device. I think it's kind of overlooked every time the next iPhone comes out. But if you got 500 bucks, after the event, this is gonna be a solid phone. We're looking at 90% of what a current iPhone 14 is likely gonna be. And this phone is gonna cost you 40, 50% less. Depending on where you look, you could get this even less than that. It also comes in multiple colors, so that's a great thing. No 120 hertz, but come on, this is 499. This is not 999, 899, stuff like that anymore. Let me know if you agree or disagree down below in the comments. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here, be sure to be well, and peace. Thank you.